I sold the house. My husband said with a triumphant expression on his face. How much more foolish can he be? I gave my husband a cold look and said this. You know nothing, do you? My name is Carmen, a 38-year-old office worker. It has been seven years since I married Adam, my husband. We met through work. Mr. Miller, the department manager of a client I was handling, introduced us. At first, I was a little confused. Since Mr. Miller has done so much for me, I couldn't just refuse. But I also had concerns about being introduced to someone strange. Anyway, I decided to meet him. Then, one day after work, we had dinner at a nice restaurant with Mr. Miller and the man he introduced. As I nervously entered the restaurant, I saw Mr. Miller and a very refreshing man. Honestly, I fell in love with him at first sight. Nice to meet you. I'm Adam. Thanks for coming today. Nice to meet you too. I'm Carmen. Sorry, this guy's too serious and a bit rigid. But he's a good guy. I thought he could be a perfect match for you, Carmen. After Mr. Miller introduced him to me, we had various conversations. It seemed that we both had a good impression of each other, and we exchanged our numbers. We also made plans to meet again, just the two of us. Soon after, he asked me out on a date, and we officially started dating. Adam was a fun and eloquent person when we were alone together. I remember thinking that we could have a great time together in the future. Even Mr. Miller, the matchmaker, was happy about our relationship. From there, we continue our relationship, and three years passed in the blink of an eye. And finally, he proposed to me. That's how we got married. I was glad that I could give good news to Mr. Miller, who treats us like his own children. After that, we went to visit each other's parents and had a formal meetings between the families, and we started preparing for the wedding. The wedding was just as we had imagined. It was wonderful. We we're very satisfied. And so, our newlywed life as husband and wife began. It was just amazing, and I felt happy every day. Since we both had jobs, we had limited time to relax on weekdays. But we made up for it by going out together on weekends, watching movies at home, and creating quality time as a couple. Since my husband is not good at housework, I mainly handle the cooking. Sometimes it can be a burden, but when I see my husband enjoying my cooking, I feel like making more for him. In the meantime, my husband got promoted to manager. His salary increased significantly, and he was filled with motivation. I also worked hard and achieved results, not to be outdone by my husband. It's a good state to be able to focus on our jobs, and with higher income, we had more money to spend. So we went on trips during holidays and had fulfilling weekends. In this way, time flew by, and five years had passed since we got married. One day, my husband came up with a proposal: Should we buy a new house? Our incomes are high, and we have decent savings. Our current house is a bit small, and it's a good opportunity to think about the future. I agreed with my husband, and we decided to buy a house together. We visited the real estate agency several times, and searched for our ideal house. After a few months, we found a house that perfectly matched our criteria. We moved in right away and started our life in the new house. It's very comfortable. The house had more rooms and a great location, so it was relatively expensive. But we considered it a long-term investment. I believe that decision was a good one. When the house is comfortable, it helps balance our lives. We were able to focus more on our jobs than before. Before I knew it, I got promoted in my company, and my income increased even more. Time flew by. And although we were still leading a relatively happy life, there was one problem: we were having difficulty having children. We started trying to conceive shortly after getting married, so we were starting to feel a sense of urgency. 
due to the influence of this issue, the communication between us as a couple started to decline slowly. Lately, my husband's been coming home later, and we rarely have meals together. I believe it's important to share meals together, but it seems like my husband doesn't understand that. Frustrated by these days, I couldn't help but complain to my husband. Hey, can we make more time for each other as a couple? I'm not saying you shouldn't go out for drinks, but we hardly spend any time together anymore. Then he said, "I go out for drinks for work reasons. I work hard to please my boss, take care of my team members, and advance in my career. It's all to pay off the mortgage for this house, you know. Instead of saying such pointless things, why don't you try increasing your income?" But I was surprised and disappointed by my husband's cold words. I simply expressed my desire to have more time together as a couple. Why did it have to escalate to such hurtful comments? At that moment, I felt a little disappointed with my husband. Since then, I realized there was a gap in our feelings as a couple. From then on, our conversations decreased even further. He leaves for work early in the morning, comes back late at night. He has to work on Saturdays, and sometimes he goes out for drinks with friends. He only stays home on Sundays, but mostly sleeps until noon. And even when he wakes up, he eats lunch in silence and goes to his room. How did it come to this? I wanted to change this situation, so I told my husband that I wanted to talk to him, and called him to the living room. What the hell? Can't you let me have Sunday off? I don't think we should be in this state. Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Don't you think we are unhappy as a couple? This is just a roommate situation. I want us to have proper conversations like we used to. Adam, what's on your mind? Oh, well, you know. By expressing my desperate feelings, my husband started to take it more seriously. Oh,、uh, looking back on my behavior, I might have neglected our relationship as a couple. I'm sorry, but. Please understand that I've been working hard for us. It's been quite a pressure. Yeah, I understand. I also understand that you go out for work-related reasons. Right. Well, that's good. We'll do better. By having an honest conversation, we were able to resolve the Cold War situation a little. From then on, our conversations increased, and we started having meals together at home, even on weekdays. Your cooking is delicious, Carmen. Thanks. I'm glad. It seems like we're slowly returning to being a happy couple as before. However, something unexpected happened during that time. Huh? Leukemia? I was diagnosed with leukemia at the hospital. I was completely stunned by this unforeseen situation. According to the doctor. I would need about six months to a year of treatment, and initially, they would prefer if I could be hospitalized for a few months. Fortunately, it was detected early, so there is a high chance of a full recovery with continued treatment. Being diagnosed with a serious illness left me devastated, but knowing that is not incurable brought some relief. And then. I told my husband about this when he came home from work. Leukemia? He was speechless, just like me. Yeah, but the chance of recovery are high with treatment. Even so, it's a pretty serious illness, isn't it? Yes. I'll have to be hospitalized for a few months, starting soon. But I'll definitely get better, so don't worry. It, yeah, I guess you get better, right? My husband seemed quite shocked. After that, I went to the hospital with my parents to complete the admission process. Since it was a weekday, my husband couldn't take time off from work, and so my hospitalization began. The nurse and doctors were very kind and helped alleviate my anxiety. My parents came to visit me every day. Making sure I didn't get bored, but 
My husband rarely visited me, and even when he did, it was just for a short while after work, and only about once a week. I felt lonely and wished he would be more supportive as a husband. He could have been my biggest source of emotional support, but he wasn't there for me. My disappointment in him grew. However, for the time being, I decided to focus on my treatment and try not to think too much about my husband. Three months passed, and I was discharged. From now on, I would continue treatment while working and visiting the hospital. I headed home with my parents, excited to be back after such a long time. But a problem arose. The key wouldn't fit in the lock. Helplessly, I pressed the intercom, and to my surprise, a stranger came out from inside the house. In this situation of not knowing who each other was, I listened to the story. It turned out they had recently bought this house. Confused, I immediately called my husband. Adam, I'm busy right now. Did you sell the house without consulting me? Ah, da. <laughs> my husband laughed on the other end of the phone. Perfect timing. There are other things I need to talk about too. See you at the cafe. Still confused, I went to the cafe with my parents. It seemed like my husband didn't expect my parents to be there, and he looked surprised. But he quickly regained his composure and mentioned for us to sit down. Adam, what's going on? Why is someone else living in our house? Cause I wanted to end this with you. So I sold the house. I'll consider the proceeds from the sales as compensation. What? Compensation? What do you mean? Can't you figure it out? You couldn't even give me a child in over seven years of our marriage. That alone disappointed me, and now you've even gotten a serious illness. Can you imagine the burden I've been carrying? That's why I'm demanding compensation for the emotional distress I've experienced. So, the sale of the house serves. As the conversation, my husband had a smug look on his face as he said that. Could this person be any more foolish? I looked at him with cold eyes and said, "You know nothing, do you? Do you really think the money from selling the house would be yours alone? Why not? I bought that house in my name, so I should have all the right to sell it." Yes, you have the right to sell it, but we are married, and we purchased it together as a couple. That house is subject to division property. Besides, I was also paying the mortgage, so I have the right to claim half of the money from selling that. Don't mess with me. I want to acknowledge that. Whether you acknowledge it or not is irrelevant. But I will receive what I'm entitled to. Including the compensation. Huh? What compensation? Because you've been having an affair, haven't you? What? 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 Why would you say that? Mom saw you leaving the house with a woman. It happened when she tried to get my clothes and belongings. So, while I was in the hospital, I hired a PI, and we obtained plenty of evidence of your affair. I said that and laid out the evidence photos on the table. Stop it! Why are you doing this here? My husband frantically gathered the photos. It won't change the fact, you know. You wanted to start a new life with your affair partner, using the money from selling that house, right? But in the end, you still have to pay me compensation. I'll also demand compensation for the emotional distress from you. Go ahead and try. I'll fight back, even if it goes to court. I guess you want to have a lawyer who will fight for you, based on your petty reasons. And if you have to pay legal fees, it will likely end up in a negative balance, even if you receive compensation. You. That's. I had already thought I couldn't live with you anymore. 
So it saved me trouble that you sold it first. Oh, it seems like you also disposed of my belongings without permission. As for that, yeah, I suppose I should consult the police. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I get it. All right. Just please, spare me. My husband suddenly pleaded with me, but there was no way I would forgive him for this. Before long, we each proceeded with the divorce process. When I reported the details of the divorce to Mr. Miller, he was outraged. Mr. Miller repeatedly apologized to me, even though he had done nothing wrong. Actually, at that time, Mr. Miller had been promoted and was in the position of executive director. It was terrible enough that my ex-husband had an affair while his wife was suffering from leukemia and even sold the house without permission during my hospitalization. Perhaps due to his preoccupation with his mistress, my ex-husband's work attitude had become sloppy and he became subject to demotion. His salary prompted and his career advancement came to a halt. Of course, my ex-husband, who suddenly became poor, was abandoned by his affair partner as well. It was all karma for his actions. I hope he experiences it fully. On the other hand, I returned to my parents' house and balanced work and treatment with their support. The treatment was progressing well, and the doctor told me that the chance of a full recovery were increasing. I intend to continue working and striving for a complete recovery.